Good morning. Welcome to First United Methodist Church. We're glad all of you are here today. What a special day it is for us to gather in the house of the Lord on Epiphany Sunday. As you can tell, we're, we're celebrating the arrival of the Magi, and uh, it'll be a big day. And so well, let's prepare our hearts now to worship the Lord.
please stand with me as we read responsively our call to worship. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon you. The glory, the glory of God shines in the darkness. Lift up your eyes and look around. Follow the star wherever it leads. Take, Take the, the journey, journey that, that leads to the, the child. child. Let your hearts rejoice. Be overwhelmed with joy. We, we worship, worship the Christ child, the, child, the hope of the, the world. world. Amen. Amen.
God of mystery, in the darkness of our world, your light shines with grace and truth. Open the eyes of our hearts to the glory of your love. Speak your word of truth and joy. May the mystery revealed in Jesus draw us closer to you. May the wonder of your love fill us with wisdom and peace. As we rejoice in your presence, teach us to seek justice and righteousness. Fill our hearts to overflowing with your joy, your glory, your hope. Amen. I'd like to welcome you here. You have 100% attendance for 2019. Good job. Good job. <laughs> um, there are several uh, things in the bulletin I want to bring to your attention. First of all, Dr. Phil's got very little voice, so that's why I'm up here. I say it's because he didn't win his ping pong tournament at his house this week. But he says he's got a cold, but we'll see. But there are several uh, things we need, want to remember. If one of your New Year's resolutions was to get more involved in church, we've got several things going on this week. Today, our fourth and fifth graders will be serving at the soup kitchen, our fish group. Then on tomorrow night is our United Methodist men that meet at 6 up in Asbury Hall. And on Tuesday at 1130, our United Methodist women meet up in Asbury Hall. Next week, our disciple, excuse me, oh, I thought he's talking to me. Next week, our disciple Bible study starts in, a, in studying the prophets. And this Saturday, our Widows Fellowship and his friends will be eat, meeting at Serafini's for lunch. There are lots of opportunities for you. If you want to know more about those or other things, please stop one of the staff today and, and let us know. Another thing that's going on, hopefully <clears throat> those of you that were in Sunday school today, uh, we're trying to gather some information. What are your dreams for the church? On January 20th, we are going to celebrate Laity Sunday, and since that's also Martin Luther King Jr. Sunday, we're going to think about what are the dreams we have for our church. So if you are in a group between now and the Wednesday before the 20th, which is the 16th, if you will uh, talk about what are some of the dreams you have for the church. They can be attitudes. They can be buildings, they can be specific programs. What are your dreams for the church? If you could funnel those back in to, to me or to any of the staff, we hope to use some of those in the worship service that day because we want God to guide us and help us uh, dream to be the church that God would have us to be. As we think about that, we will now move into our prayer time. Loving God, we come here just to sit and relax and breathe. We've had a busy few weeks. We have enjoyed celebrations of the birth of Jesus. We have enjoyed celebrations of the new year. And God, now, as we reflect on those celebrations and those times, give us a focus for 2019. As the wise men are celebrated today of coming to find you, help us find you. Help us realize how to find your will in our lives. Help us realize how to live your will in our lives. Help us to be the people that show your love, your care, your concern. Help us be your hands and feet, God. We think of those who are sick, we think of those who are grieving. We think of those who are experiencing loss. We think of those who are trying to make decisions. We think of those who, who are having a hard time getting along at home or at work or at school. God, we lift those concerns to you and sometimes, God, those concerns are our own concerns. But we realize that it's a new year, it's a new beginning, it's a new time that we can focus and dedicate to you. We thank you for being there 
in our lives, sometimes when we don't even notice. We thank you for ways that you lead and guide us. And we ask that you continue to do that. Help us find people that need us to help them see your word, to hear your voice, and to feel your love. Help us find people that can help us find your way and your voice and your love. We thank you for this opportunity we have to be in worship today. I ask that you help us hear your word, but God, help us not forget it. Help us hear it and then do it, now and always. All this we ask in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. I want to invite the family of Sarah Brunson and her sponsors to come forward. You want to invite your parents? Invite the congregation to turn to page 39 in your hymnal. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water in the spirit in, in the spirit. And all of this is God's gift offered to us without price. Today I present to you Sarah Brunson for baptism. Stephan and Holly, I ask you these questions. On behalf of the whole church, do you renounce your, the spiritual forces of wickedness? Do you reject the evil powers of this world? And do you repent of your sins? And do you accept the freedom and the power that God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever form they present themselves? And do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior? Do you put your whole trust in His grace and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ is open to people of all ages, nations, and races? And will you nurture this child in Christ's holy church, that by your teaching and example, she may be guided to accept God's grace for herself, to profess her faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? And do you, as Christ's body, the church, do you reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? And will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life, and include all these persons before you now in your care. With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround these persons with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples 
who walk in the way that leads to life. Let's all join together now and let's stand as we profess our Christian faith as it's obtained in the scriptures of the Old and the New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, the Holy Son of Who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, and on the third day he arose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and you brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved us on the ark, saved those on the ark through the water. And after the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. And when we saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus nurtured in the water of a womb. And he was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. And he called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Declare his works to the nations. His glory among all the people. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and this one who is to receive it. Wash away her sin and clothe her in righteousness throughout her life that in dying and being raised with Christ she may share in your final victory. All praise to you, Eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. Sarah, Louise, Flynn, Brunson, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Can you put your hands up on her? Eli, can you touch her leg down here? Can you reach her? Okay. Sarah being born of the water and spirit. May you now be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Let's go meet your new congregation. You all want to turn in your, uh, in your black of faith? We sing him, though. And let's sing, David, what number is that? 2249. And sing Sarah, Sarah. Let's go see. Want to go see?
Let us pray. Mighty and merciful God, thank you for this great family and the gift that you've given them through Sarah. And we pray that the blessing of your love, your nurture and care from us as a congregation and from her immediate family may give her what she needs to be your faithful servant. We pray this now with faith and confidence in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless all of you. I'd like to invite the children to come on up here. Come on, Eli. Let's sit right here. Good morning. How is everybody? So, a long time ago, when I first started driving, this is what we used to get where we were going. What is this? A map. We don't use those very often anymore. They're kind of little. I couldn't see them now. I picked South Carolina because I guess I'm thinking about the beach. <laughs> then we got something called GPS that we used to plug in our, in our cars. Um, what do your parents use now to get directions? What do they use? They use, it, they use it on their phone, yeah. They use Google Maps or Way or whatever, all those, all those options. So today we're remembering the wise men getting to see Jesus. Did they have a map? How did they get there? The star. So it was, it was a kind of a map. When we think about stars, there's the North Star. And where is the North Star always? and the north so it never moves right so today as we think about the wise men coming and following the star like if they couldn't see the star and it was dark or or it was cloudy what do you think what do we do then do we just have to wait for it to clear up but do we always know that the star is there like sometimes I'm really glad yesterday and today it looks like we're going to see sunshine. But this time of year, a lot of times we can't see the sun. Did you see the sun? But sometimes we can't see the sun, and I am always so happy that I know the sun is there even when I can't see it. Right? So when we think about the wise men, they were following the star to find Jesus. There are things that we follow to find Jesus. And, and really, Sarah was baptized today because they want her to follow Jesus. And one way we follow Jesus is by coming to church, right? There are other people that help us follow the star. There might be uh, Dr. Phil or me or Mr. David or the Hardisons at church or your Sunday school teachers or your little church leaders. There are lots of people trying to help us find the star. But sometimes, do you ever just not want to be nice? Do you ever not want to go to school? Do you ever not want to be nice to your brother or your sister? I'm going to ask these grown-ups, are there days when you do not want to go to work? <laughs> Raise your hand if that has ever, ever, ever happened. So there are times when we don't want to do what we're supposed to do, right? But there are people around, and there's the church, and there's God, and then there's the Holy Spirit in our heart and Jesus trying to tell us to do the right thing, right? So what I want us to remember as we think about the wise men following the star, that we're still trying to follow what God wants us to do, even when we don't want to. And that's what all of us out here, we're all here for each other to help each other. Sometimes children help grown-ups, and sometimes grown-ups help children. But we're all trying to follow that star and find out what God wants us to do, how God wants us to be, who God wants us to love. So I think that is our New Year's resolution to try to follow that star. Let's pray about that. Dear God, we thank you that the wise men found Jesus. We thank you that we have our church and we have our families, and we have our friends, and we have our Sunday school, and our jam choir, and our little church that help us find you. 
But God, sometimes it's cloudy. Sometimes we don't feel like doing what we're supposed to do. But help us realize that you're still always there. Help us follow you. Help us worship you. And help us love each other. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We three kings of Orient are. As we follow the star in the church, the star takes us many places. This week, uh, it's going to take us to Honduras. And we have our, our ministry, our medical mission team getting ready to go. I'm going to ask Dr. Arvid Kenner to come forward. I've kind of, kind of put her on the spot here. Um, but I want to ask her to come and represent this team. 30 members of, uh, from around our community, volunteers, professionals that are going to go and uh, lend medical assistance and aid uh, in all sorts of areas, everything from general uh, medicine to uh, eyeglasses to uh, dental care. And uh, even this year, a, a kind of a new dynamic to talk a little bit about birth control, which is an interesting topic in, the, in, the, in Honduras, in that, in that area. Um, as you know, uh, last year the team was not able to go. There were a lot of issues related to their, their safety. Um, and there's still issues, always. And we want to pray. Um, and so I've asked Arby to come and, and uh, stand before you today to represent the team as they re get ready to go. And uh, I would like to anoint her on behalf of all those that you all will treat in the, in the next week or so. Um, I'm guessing close to 2,000 people, maybe. Yeah. It's an amazing feat in, in one week's time. And so... Arba anoints you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And I want to invite you to join me in prayer uh, as we pray. And, and I'd like for you to just place your hand forward to Arba as we focus on, on not on her so much, but on that team and pray that God's power will, will give what they need. Will you, help, will you join me as we do this? Loving and holy God, we thank you that in this moment we, we surround Arba with our prayers. But not only Arba, but this entire team, as they take a great, I don't know, they follow the journey, just like the wise men did. They bring gifts of hope, of healing to the broken and the hurting and the disenfranchised. And so, Lord, anoint her and anoint this team. Set your hedge of protection around them. And may their travels be safe. May their wisdom be accurate. And may their endurance be strong. We give you thanks, holy God. And we pray this prayer in faith and confidence through the name of Christ who sends us out to care for all his children. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Well, this is the season of Epiphany today. I guess the season today, today's the day of Epiphany. And our gospel reading is from Matthew chapter 2. And I want to invite you to stand now for the reading of the gospel lesson. The lesson is found in your bulletin if you'd like to follow along. Hear now the words of the gospel. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi came from the, e from the east, came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. 
And when he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied. For this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. And then Herod came to the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. And as soon as you find him, report to me so that I may, to, may too go and worship him. And after they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star that they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. And when they saw the star, they were overjoyed. And on coming to the house, they saw the, ch the child with his mother, Mary. And they bowed down and worshipped him. And then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and incense and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Be seated. So how many of you have heard that scripture before? Anybody raise your hand? If you have, raise your hand. A couple of you have, okay. <laughs> We've all heard it a million times, haven't we? Yeah. And yet, friends, I'm going to tell you, every time I read this, these wise men pose a great fascination for me. I love this, uh, our, our statues, our character, characterization of, of those wise men. They're big enough you can get down kind of in their face and you wonder what they're thinking. Or Anyway, I wonder what they would, would say. Anyway, the question is, who are they? Who are these wise men? And how many of them were there? And all the Bible tells us is that they had three gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Would we travel great distances carrying precious cargo with just two other people? Does that make sense to you? I mean, it would be odd to travel in a small group, especially uh, carrying riches. Uh, you know, there were robbers and thieves. They lurked everywhere in that day, much like today. And so, you know, it seems likely that th there must have been a more sizable group. We, we see these beautiful things like on the front of your bulletin, you know, the picture of the three wise men on their camels going through the desert. But the truth is, there probably were a lot more people with them than just those three. And if we give these men the status that we traditionally ascribe them to, surely they had some helpers along the way as well. So it brings us to the question then, were they kings? Well, we really aren't certain about that. Because of their gifts, they probably were powerful as kings in their own country. And I would also point out to you that they were maybe not kings as we consider kings, in, in that each one of them was a ruler of their country. Because you remember, I just read it in verse 12. It said, and having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their own country, or returned to their country by another route. It's only talking about one country here. So were they kings? Maybe not. Maybe not officially kings, but certainly kingly enough that they fulfilled the Old Testament prophecy. They may have been richer or more powerful than most kings. Oh, they had wealth. They had enough power that Herod does not have them killed for on the spot for suggesting that his replacement has been born, you know. And let me tell you, Herod was very capable of that. Herod had already done it to some of his own family members. He, po he would kill anybody who opposed him. And to come to Herod and say, a new king has been born, well, that's about as dangerous as it gets, Right? But these wise men had knowledge, friends. And they had a revelation from God. So what did they believe about Jesus? Well, first let me tell you that Scripture in Genesis and 1 Samuel and 1 Kings tell us that bringing gifts was particularly important in the ancient East when you approached a superior and these magi viewed Jesus to be their superior and much more if you look closely at the gifts. You got your gold. Gold was a gift for a king. 
Gold was a precious in that day as it is in ours. Uh, taking the gift of gold, they were certain of the status of the one that they were seeking, right? So their faith is lived out through their giving. And gold is a gift for a king. They had frankincense, which was an incense that was burned to a god. Frankincense is a, what is it, a glittering, odorous gum that's obtained by making uh, uh, incisions on the bark of certain trees. Anyway, it was common practice to burn incense as an offering to a god during that time in history. And that might speak a little bit about their view of Jesus, that he was more than just a king. I mean, think about that for a second. You don't read anywhere in the Bible where these wise men brought gifts to King Herod, do you? <laughs> so myrrh, too, was a gift, and it was a burial spice. And myrrh, as we've talked about, comes from a certain tree in Arabia, and we won't go into all that. But it was a much valued spice and a perfume that was used in embalming. Now this third gift is another very valuable gift. And it may speak that they had some knowledge of the purpose for which Jesus had come. These gifts were clearly gifts for a king, for a God, for one who would die, who would sacrifice. Their gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh, we can rip them off out of our mind with nothing flat. But do we realize how much how, vo how many volumes those three gifts speak. So when did the wise men arrive? Well, I'm not going to... Um, there's a lot of information that I could give you here, but I'm not going to bore you with the technicalities of Scripture and Jewish traditions and so forth. But what I will tell you is that 30 days, 38 days after Jesus' birth, Mary went to the temple and she offered a sacrifice that only a poor person would offer. Two doves. The suggestion is that the wise men have not had their visit to Jesus yet. Otherwise, with the gold that they brought, she would have offered a more significant sacrifice, a lamb. But they're going to need some money. That family is going to need some money to make their exit to Egypt. Because Herod's men are, are saddling up now and ready, getting ready to come and kill all the children under two years of age. And that may provide, if you will, a guess at Jesus' age when the arrival of the, of the wise men as well. Remember, in verse 7 it says, Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time that the star had appeared. Herod wanted to know how old that child would be that he's looking for. It would seem that the wise men were not only sent by God to worship this child, but also to provide, provide the child's escape to Egypt. And isn't that the way it is for us too? You know, God works on God's own timetable. Would you agree with that? And sometimes that can be really frustrating. I know over the last year, the Honduras team has struggled with the fact that it wasn't time for them to go yet. And, and they wrestled with that. That's just an example. And, and, and yet, this is the time. And we give thanks for that. And, and these wise men, they had what they needed and they had it when they needed it as well. Now, what did the Jewish leaders think about all this? My friends, the, the thing that stands out more boldly to me than anything in this story is the contrast between the wise men and the Jewish leaders of Jerusalem that are right there on, the, on site. The thing that stands out so boldly is, wouldn't you think that these Jewish people would have been overjoyed at the birth of Jesus? I mean, after all, they've been waiting for a liberator. They've been waiting for a Messiah. And the angel said, He's here. Some were overjoyed, but it's odd, though, how the wise men had to come from another country to worship the newborn king. Whereas the religious leaders that we're told about, they didn't even bother to go over to Bethlehem and see. Is that the way it is with us? If this had taken place in Lawrenceburg, <laughs> you know, I can't honestly tell you that I would have gotten in my car to go see this thing that had taken place. If people could, real, could have realized who this Jesus was, if people would only realize who this Jesus is, 
Anyway, the wise men, they found the king that they sought. And then they disappeared just as quickly as they emerged on the scene. So why is this important for you and me today? Well, you know, the wise men had a living faith, friends. For us in our day, we have to ask, is God calling us to follow a new and special, in a new and a special way? Of all the things that we could take away from this story, my friends, there were many others who should have been most joyous over the birth of the Savior. But they weren't interested in seeking a newborn king. I wonder why. Maybe they were afraid. Afraid of Herod. Or maybe, maybe they just liked their lives the way they were. Whatever the reason, these wise men, they traveled a great distance while the particular religious leaders mentioned in the story They didn't even bother to travel across the street. And again, how much like us is that? I mean, how many of you would have traveled as far as Lawrenceburg to see this thing that has taken place, right? Would you? Honestly? Would I? And yet, friends, God rewarded these wise men for their journey and their offering of gifts. And As I've said many times, none of our gifts compare, certainly, to the gift that God has given us through Christ. But while I got you here, I want to mention one other thought. The wise men went home a different way. And of course, I'm talking about their physical direction, but isn't that, doesn't it speak a spiritual truth to us as well? You know, when we truly seek the king, listen, when we truly seek the king, do we not always go home a different way? See, that's the vision that God has provided for our church, that this, is to be a, that this would be a place where lives can be changed. If we walk out of here today the same way that we were when we came in here, if we walk out of here going, oh, ho-hum, you know, then something isn't connecting. And I want to say to you, and invite you, if you will, to allow 2019 to be a time for all of us, including myself, to put ourselves in a position of, of allowing God to make us all that God needs us to be. And so, friends, as we close, I want to invite you just to bow your heads a second and just focus on your own self for a moment. And I want to ask you, where is God really needing you today to step up to that next level in your faith journey? My invitation is that together, let's take the next day, the next week, the next months to discover those directions that God desires for our lives. Because friends, we have good news to share. We have the greatest news to share with those who Outside these walls, they wouldn't even walk across the street, much less make a journey to find new life. Let's pray about that. Holy and mighty God, we thank you that in this moment, we can join with you and you can join our hearts and you give us an understanding and and equip us with everything necessary that we could be your children and do your will. Forgive us, Lord, when we allow ourselves to be distracted. Distracted in worship, distracted in life from You. But let us seek You, just like these wise men sought You. May we, Lord, have a new understanding of what that means. And may it it be uh, contagious to others that in a great excitement of life and of spirit, we can be Your church. Thank you, God, for what you're about to do. We glorify you now. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Friends, our ushers are preparing to come forward as we respond to the word. So let's prepare ourselves to offer our gifts and our tithes to Almighty God.
Loving God, as we offer our gifts and tithes, we reflect upon these gifts the wise men brought your Son and our Savior. What can we bring, O oh Lord? What can we give? Bless now the gifts and the givers, and we give you thanks. Amen. Loving God, now as we go from this place, may your peace that passes all understanding abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. Greet your, greet your neighbors before you go.